This week on Open Falls Training, we'll be talking about updating your system. Welcome to Open Falls Training. I'm your host, Matthew Williams, and today we'll be covering how to update the Ubuntu Linux system that we've been working on. Now, the way that software management works on Linux is a little different than the way it works in the Windows world. The way it works in Windows is catching up, but in the Windows world, we're very used to the only thing that updates, that Windows updates cover is the core, the operating system itself updates. Now, occasionally you'll get some updates for Microsoft products in there, but that's pretty much it. If you want to update a piece of software in the Windows world, typically the software either has to update itself or give you an alert that there's an update, or you have to go out and look for it yourself. But in the Linux world, it's a little different. There is a central repository or as it's more commonly known a repo where all software updates come from so your security updates the updates for the operating system itself the updates for your software all come from one place in fact you can even install new software from these repos so you never have to go to a random website and download new software. There is some exception here, but it's typically the exception, not the rule. So if you want to update your system, you know, install new software, you can do all of this without ever having to go visit another website for the most part. So today we're going to show you how in Ubuntu to update your system so that way you have the latest software updates for your operating system and all the software that's already installed. So there's two ways we can do this and we'll switch on over to our virtual machine here now. So as you can see here right now that a little icon shows up that's called you know software updater and in fact let's move in a little bit closer and as you can see here it is and if you click on it it pops up and shows you what all the updates are and the nice thing is you can actually click these little drop downs and it'll tell you a little more information about what's going to be installed because not only will it install the program itself or install the updates for the program but the updates that come along with that program the additional files it takes so in some cases you can see that like LibreOffice math there's no additional things it needs so this is a really nice and be easy way to update your system so all you have to do is click install now to get the process going And what will happen in this process is you'll be asked to, you know, authenticate. This is the password you set up for your user. And this is required because anytime software, new software is installed, you have to give it your password. This is a really great way of making sure that only the updates, only changes happen to your system when you want them to happen. So go ahead and punch in your the password and click authenticate oops I had the uh, caps lock key on so let's try that again so enter the password and click authenticate and it'll start downloading the software so we'll let this finish and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to open the software updater separately if you want to check for updates but the nice thing is this runs in the background and will check for new updates daily so you don't have to do anything but if you want to you can and we'll show you that when this process is done
Sorry about that. Apparently my connection failed. Um, so what we'll do is we'll show you how to bring the software updater up in other means here. Just as soon as I, yep, my uh, connection's back up. But to bring the software updater up manually, what you do is you come back here to the dash, as we showed in last episode, and just type updater. And right here it is, software updater. Click it to bring it up. And this is how you would manually check for a software update. It'll, you know, go out, it'll check those repos we mentioned earlier and see what new packages are available for download. That way we can have our system nice, you know, nice and fully updated and ready to go. And in the next episode, we'll cover how we can customize the way updates <clears throat> happen that way that they happen only in such a way as we want should you have that need and all right here we go software updater has finished checking for new updates and now it's showing us again all the updates are ready to be installed and you can again scroll through and check everything and click install now. And of course it will ask for your password again to make sure this is a command you actually want to have happen. And during this if you want, you can click this little drop down for details to show you more of what's going on in the background. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And as you can see, what it's showing is what's being downloaded and how much of the downloads left to go. So we'll speed through this and we'll be right back. And as you can see here, now that the all the downloads have finished, it automatically launches into the process of installing those updates. You know, really great and useful, saves you a lot of time and effort. Once you start the process, you have next to no interactions you have to take with it during all of this. So we'll let the updates finish installing and we'll wrap things up after that. All right, and here we are with the process of the installation being complete. And when using this, normally you don't have to update a Linux system when the software is, has been updated. <laughs> but in this case, there is an exception in which it has called for an update to be needed for all the updates to be applied. And that is the kernel has been updated. And when a kernel update happens, that is one of the few times you need to restart your system for that to take effect. Because you can't, you know, reload your running kernel while it's going, but you don't have to do that right now. You know, it shows us over here the option of restart later or restart now. And unlike the Windows world where it might run an update on you right in the middle of you doing something, it's not going to do anything until you click the button to tell it which one to do. So we'll tell it to restart later or no let's go ahead and tell it to restart now because we're done for right now so and here's the uh, power menu so we'll tell it to restart 
And with that, we're done with how to update a Ubuntu Linux system. You know, package management in the Linux world makes things a lot easier and a lot simpler. And in the next episode, we'll show you how to configure things a little more should you want to. There are some reasons, and we'll go over in the next episode. But I'd like to thank you for taking your time for watching and, you know, following along with us. And I, of course, have to help thank everyone who has helped back this project and make it happen. You know, from our friends at Think Penguin to a new group who's come on and is helping, um, DigitalOcean, which I'll have some stuff covering how to use them in the future, and all the producers who have helped make this happen. So until next time, later.